Hey, welcome to the Restaurant Coach Podcast. It is the cure for the common restaurant. I am so happy to have someone on the call today, someone as a guest who is definitely does not run a common restaurant. Welcome Rome, Chef Romeo Rogali from Ross Plant Based in New York City. Chef Romeo, hey, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy you're here. Well, thank you, Donald. Thank you for having me on this podcast. I'm excited, uh, you know, to share what I know. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, and, and full disclosure, R- right. Romeo and his wife Milka are members of one of my coaching programs. So uh, just want to give full disclosure up front. But so I know a little bit more about him than maybe you do. So I wanted him to share. He's got a really, really unique background because like, you know, the traditional path, like to be a restaurant owner, a lot of times start off in the restaurant business. They go to culinary school, they're chefs, and then they just, you know, the next thing you do is open a restaurant. But you have a really unique background. Tell people a little bit about your unique background. I sure do. Um, I never thought in a million years I would end up in the restaurant industry. I started off in film school. I've always wanted to be a director and a <laughs> producer. And people don't believe that I'm in the restaurant business because that's always what I've talked about <laughs> my whole life, about film, film, film. So I went to film school. I lived in Paris for about eight years. Lived in Paris, went to film school, shot you know documentaries, music videos, and moved it to New York to pursue my filmmaking career. Yeah, yeah. And landed a job at, well, my wife's, at the time, my uh, boss's, she, she was she was my boss when I landed a job at <laughs> my mom's restaurant. She was the one who trained me, and I fell in love with the industry. Because yeah, yeah. I'm a people's person. I just love meeting new people. I love uh, changing lives, you know, to, 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 to the best of my ability. And that's how I fell in love. And my filmmaking slowly shifted towards... The restaurant business. I uh, mm-hmm. started writing a business plan, and now Ross Plan Base is born. Has been doing so great, but what I've studied in film school didn't go into drain. I'm using, I'm utilizing that yeah. in the restaurant industry, and it's helping us in so many ways. And it's one of the things I'm so excited about to talk about. You know, on at the summit, you yeah, know, yeah, about my experience. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't know, mm-hmm. uh, every October I have a three-day summit I always hold every year, every October. It's usually the last week of October. This year, it's October 23rd, 24th, 25th. It is in Tucson, Arizona. It's called the Restaurant Success Summit. Um, uh, You can grab a seat. You can just go to restaurantsuccesssummit.com and grab a seat if you like. Romeo is one of the – I have eight other speakers plus myself. Uh, Romeo is one of the speakers. And the reason I'm having him come is because, you know, he is a member, but the one thing I really love about him is his social media. He does a lot of video and the video does look very cinematic, almost like effortless. Like, and I'm like, dude, who'd you hire to do all that? <laughs> stuff? He's like, I did it myself. I'm like, no way. It's like too good. And he said, and he said, I did it on my iPhone. I'm like, no way. He goes, yeah, I, did I shoot it all on my iPhone. I go, no way. I mean, so people have a lot of this misconception that to have great video, you got to have a lot of fancy equipment. You got to have a lot of fancy editing skills. You got to have a lot of crazy stuff. But I think a lot of it's more about if you have a process map and understand the thinking, like, you know, you have this, uh, you know, this visualization, this process map of thinking like a director. So you know what the scene should be and you know how it should be framed. And so I think that's going to be one of the beautiful things that you're going to teach people at the summit. Absolutely. And I'm really, yep. really excited about that. Yeah. Cause it's really great. Yeah. Yep. Then, you know, yeah, it's, you can shoot a whole movie on an iPhone nowadays. You don't need, you don't need no extra, one extra equipment other than your phone, your People smartphone. Do. People do shoot f- mo- full length Movie. movies on iPhones. It's really They cool. do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about like, uh, about Ross Plant Based. What's like the whole, because you got this really cool vibe about it. Tell us a little bit about Ross Plant Based. So Ross Plant Based, uh, so started off because of an experience and a personal experience we've had through a uh, family. My, my, my dad was sick at some mm-hmm. point and it was through plant based diet that we were able to save his life. And that's how the whole concept started. But it's a combination of two things. One is we want to connect communities to real living foods wow. that, that taste really good. And also human connection. It's one thing I feel like these days restaurants lack our experience. There's no experience. It seems like the workers don't care about, you know, whether you have a good experience or not. You know, you just just another a, n- a number you're in. Please just eat, pay, don't complain, yada, yada, yeah, yeah, and go yeah. out. Exactly. And that's how it's been. And it's just getting worse and worse every year. 
And we're the total opposite. We're about, you know, really connecting with our community and with our guests and also with our teams. One thing that you thought us is the team experience is as mm -hmm. important as the guest experience. And that really changed the game for us. Very, very cool. Yeah, I, I, I hear, I mean, you get rave reviews. Actually, one of our uh, one of our other members, uh, Lindsay and Nick, were down in New York, and they stopped by your place. They did. They did. Yeah, yeah. Man. They yeah. were really super excited. And I, I have to tell you, I, and I'm going to tell you publicly right here, they gave you raving reviews. They said, man, Romeo Milk can run that place tight. And it was like, <laughs> it was like they're on point. I said, well, that's, and that's why I didn't want to blow this thing up into multiple locations. So, yeah, you gave us all the tools. Uh, like you always say, it's just like putting a hammer on the table. If you don't pick it up and use it, you know, there's yeah. not, there's not much you can do. You just got to use it. And, you know, potential. we're able to use potential, the tools. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just potential, just potential. Yeah. You know, what do you think, you know, able to change pivot stuff, you know, make adapting to the different, you know, constant environment of the economy, what was I, what do you think is some of the kind of key characteristics of you and Milka running Roz that have helped you kind of really rise to the top so fast in that New York food scene? Which the New York food scene, I mean, it's a competitive. It is. Dog. I mean, brutal world. It is. It is very competitive, and especially for us, we were thrown in the fire from the get go. We opened yeah. the week before the pandemic, and we had to pivot real quick. We yeah. didn't have one is we couldn't get the loan, the PPP loan, because we're new. So we really had to pivot. And I think the first step is really sitting down and looking, just being outside of your restaurant to really yeah. think it through. Uh, not being not being nervous, you know, trying new things. Sometimes you fail, sometimes you know, yeah. it works, sometimes it doesn't. And for us, uh, so we sat for, I think, once or twice a day for, the, for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Now, how are we going to make this work? We don't have money to, if this doesn't work, that means we have to close the business. We had yeah, yeah. everything we had in the business, everything we had. Yep. So we sat, one is we never even thought of doing uh, takeout and delivery because, you know, our food is kind of, it's more complicated than, you know, other uh, cuisines to do takeout. So that's something that we wanted to do a year after we opened. And then we started trying new takeout containers and how are we going to reach to our you know guests and so on and so forth. And we were able to pivot. We closed. So March 7th of 2020, we had our grand opening. A week later, we were shut down. Yeah. We were closed for two months, just you know, brainwashing, brainstorming and on ways that how we can make the business work. And may we reopen doing takeout and delivery. We were just doing so much marketing and mm -hmm. videos. And in May, we started doing takeout and delivery. It was just me and my wife and Milka. I we used to lock the door. <laughs> and a month later, we were um, a, a media called Black Owned Brooklyn. They wrote us up oh, know, wow. about the business, how we started. And then it was just, it's gotten crazy busy after that. And since then, we never looked back. It's been consistently busy. But I think... What I'm trying to say is the pivot, the pivot part was so important for us, yep. you know, to be able to save the business. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that just comes to having that open mindset about, listen, I'm not giving up. I got to figure this out. You know me. I, I believe everything is figure outable and it's never lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness. Resource. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that's one of the goals of coaching is to give you lots of tools. So you feel like I got lots of tools in the toolbox. So if I feel I'm stuck, just pick up another tool and I can use that to get break free. Right. Yes. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. It's just, you know, not giving up and to keep pushing, keep pushing. If something doesn't work, you know, try the next best thing and don't be afraid to ask. I think I really leverage on people that know better than me because I just know what I know. I'm not, yeah. I'm no expert, so I'm not afraid or shy to ask experts. And that's why we have you as our coach because awesome. we just know what we know and look we, what, where we've gotten since we started with you. And you've got such a unique niche. I mean, all right. So Ethiopian food by itself is unique, right? It's unique, yes. And then plant-based Ethiopian <laughs> food. It was like, you want to talk about super niche? I mean, that's like... Damn, man, can you go down any farther? It's like, <laughs> right. it's like super, super. <laughs> right. We push it even further, and then we did like a fusion, you know, like oh, yeah. Ethiopian and Southern mix. So, you know, that that whole thing is really working. At yeah, first, we're a little, your influences we're, for like your inspirations for culinary stuff. Culinary, so I'm a self-thought 
I learned everything I know mm-hmm. from my mom and my grandmother. They were they're amazing cooks. Well, my grand my grandma passed away uh you know years ago, but I learned from her and I learned from my mom. So they they taught me all about uh, my cooking skills, you know, flavors and all of that good stuff. And when you think back to your like your childhood memories, like me too, my I, I was I never went to culinary school. I was trained by my dad, who was a chef, but my early early influence on my culinary kind of just that farm to table mindset was my grandmother who had a huge garden in the backyard. We used to go out and I remember on weekends, we'd roam these country roads, take her old station wagon. We'd roam these country roads looking for wild asparagus and wild berries and the harvest right. stuff and come back. It was like crazy. I'm, yeah. I'm, Grandmothers are the best cooks too. They are. And it was like the total appreciation for mother nature. You know, right. Like yes. Appreciate it and respect it. And then taking the bounty of that and bringing it back and making something for family was like such a huge thing that I, I still carry to this day when I'm in the kitchen is that I always think cooking is a, is an opportunity to give. You know, yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more. It is, is it, it is an opportunity to give growing up. I remember we've always had yeah. get togethers, parties, lunch, dinner. And I think the hospitality part comes from that. You just want oh, to yeah. coffee. Yeah. Well, hospitality is all about being a host, the ultimate host. Right, right, right. Yeah. So from the culinary side, stuff like that, we also, you know, I know restaurants, there's a lot of restaurants have great culinary side. But the thing that makes a great business is also that leadership portion. What do you think really makes a good leader, a great leader in the restaurant industry? For me, I feel a great leader is someone that can inspire. Yeah. Someone that can um, have your team committed. Mm-hmm. You don't want compliance, you want commitment. Yes, yes. And I feel like you do that by one is making sure your team are happy, mm-hmm. the team experience, and two, uh, we used to ha- we used to think so. We've always been so nice, me and Milka. It doesn't necessarily mean our culture was great, but one thing that you taught us is you know having standards and having high standards is really what attracts great talent. It does. And we used to think like we're so nice, like why can't we get like you know great you know, great people working for us just does not make sense. And it's because we never communicated what our standards were. And I think two things that really changed for us is having, you know, our core values and our standards. Mm -hmm. And now they know exactly what to expect. Uh, We know, they know exactly what we expect from them. Yes. Yes. So yeah, there's no, and we, we just so care. We care in, in their developments, you know, we help them grow within the organization or outside the organization, we always tell them it doesn't have to be in the restaurant, but yeah. whatever they want to do, we're there to help them achieve whatever it is they aspire. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's what great, great leadership is really caring about your team. All right. So talk about caring, you know, I'm a huge believer in self care. Yep. And, re- and I push all my, all my members, all my coaching members, I push them all to make sure you're taking time for self care. Have you noticed like a change when you like, have you changed some of your self-care stuff since we first started? And then what do you see as the influence or impact of taking care of yourself first? Uh, I think you can't be a leader if you don't take care of yourself. That's just, you you can't. And as I understood that, you know, when we, when we had you, when we started with you, it's the day, even how the day starts, Mm. I wake up, Early enough, around 6 a.m., I go to my gym, I, you know, meditate, and I write my journals. My day usually goes great. When I go in the restaurant, my energy is different. Yeah. How I communicate with my team is so different. The days I don't go to the gym, I don't meditate, I'm usually, I'm just such in a bad mood. Oh, yeah. My energy is so different, and it affects the entire restaurant, and it affects, oh. you know, how they work. Because what's our and number one like, say? Culture flows. <laughs> Down, country culture doesn't flow up. Culture it flows down. Flow up. Okay. I say it all the time. I preach it all the time. Culture flows, and down. it's so true. And I you know, now I understand it. Now I yeah, really, yeah. really understand it because at the end of the day, every every step of the way, they look up to you. Every second, they look up to you, and it's so important. You know how we carry ourselves and how we take care of ourselves. Because yeah. I, like you said, it really starts from from us. Yeah, and, and one of the things I'm really big on too is, of course, I'm big on all my members. Getting to the point where, because a lot of people, when they start coaching with me, they never take vacations because they feel they can't leave the restaurant. I can't leave my restaurant. Can't leave my restaurant. If I leave, please don't they'll, they'll destroy the place. I can't leave. I can't leave. You guys just got back from a great vacation in Europe, didn't you? We went, we went away for three weeks. 
That I know. Usually, it never happens. Yes, that's never you know, happened. You were gone for three weeks in Europe, having a great time. I mean, the pictures were great on your Instagram. Yeah, you yeah. guys. What was the best meal you guys had over in Europe? If you had to pick out one, come on. The best meal I've had in Europe. The, the best meal I've had in my life is in Tuscany, Italy. Oh wow! I, I had this pasta. I just I I still dream about it. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> dream about it. <laughs> Yeah, Wake that was the best. Night, wipe up my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so pasta, pasta was the best meal I've had in That's Tuscany. Awesome. Yeah, in Tuscany, and second best meal was in Aruba. We did a chef's table. It was like just ten people. I think it was one, also one of the best meals I've I've had. It was a ceviche. I don't know how they made it. It was like the best. It was I think it was four or five years ago. It was the best ceviche I've ever had. So those two meals are the best meals. Yeah. So you, and you yeah. guys just got back this last weekend from uh, L.A. too. L.A. We took another trip. Another. Yeah. So we promised uh, ourselves we're going to travel every three months. So yeah, quarterly we're going to go away. I want my. I always like recommend my all my members take up a vacation every quarter. It's so important. It is. It's huge. one, and then it also helps you how to trust your team. Mm-hmm. It does. Really. If, you can't, if you can't trust your team, you don't. You don't have a team. I mean, that's exactly. Yeah. And I feel like when you have a good culture, you don't have to worry about anything. Nothing changed. When we came back, everything was as is. We kept getting our amazing reviews. I checked resi surveys. You know, it just kept running the way we, we wanted them to run it. And I feel like that comes from leadership. It does. So yeah. what do you think is like, the biggest problem restaurants face today? So I know uh, staffing is a big problem. Yeah. And I always tell Bilka, every time we go to a restaurant, the service is bad, whatever. Yeah. And I always blame the management. It it's always, really, it, it is. Start, it really, and it's getting worse. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> I think it's so, so bad. It's Especially in New York. Especially no, everywhere York. is bad. I, Stacey and I went out to a place the other day, or yesterday, for brunch. Mm-hmm. I swear, I said to her, I think, this, I think our server is stoned. He was like, hi, I'm Kyle. I'll be taking care of you today. And it's like his eyes were barely open. I'm like, so it's gonna be horrible service. I know. It got so bad. Like you know, he come by. He goes, "Can I get you? Oh, yeah, can we get some ketchup?" Oh yeah, okay. Disappear. I had to go up to the. I had to go up to the service station and ask for ketchup. You know, yeah, it was horrible. Horrible. It's so, it's so bad. It's just getting worse. But like you said, I, it's all leadership. It's all leadership because they don't spend enough time with you know with their team. Uh, they don't. It seems like they don't care about the team experience yes, and yeah. they. I know there is a place a uh, few doors down from where we are. All the staff, all the team members there, they're always smoking weed outside. Oh, no, 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 like, how, how does this work? How can someone smoke weed all day while they're at work? <laughs> and, and perform at a high level. Yeah. And perform. Yeah. yeah so I think it's, it's definitely a problem everyone is seeing. And I, I just, at the end of it still comes down to uh, leadership. It does. It does. So, like, you know, we start a coaching program. We use, you know, we use what's called the restaurant coach method, which basically Mm -hmm. follows our 3P framework. It's people, product, process. Now, when I show people the people, product, process part, and I tell them, like, the people part's the biggest problem you have. Everyone looks at the marketing, of course. Everyone looks at the marketing. (laughs) That's what I want. That's what I want. If you look back now, knowing what you know now, and when we first started, and I, and if I, you know, I said to you, uh, before knowing what you know, I said, hey, Romeo, you know, culture is going to be the biggest thing. You were like, no way. That's not- I'm like, we need systems. We need checklists. It's, checklists. It's, it, it's, it. Right it's like everyone thinks it's like the other the other shiny pieces. Always, you we always. I think for people that doesn't know, you know, including myself, I didn't know then. If you have a system, that's it. You don't have no problem. It's just you know a well oiled machine. It doesn't matter what kind of systems you have if the people if the people part is not dialed in. They're not going to follow. Yeah. They're not going to follow. The oh. System. Yeah, if the culture's you know, not right, if they don't have accountability culture, no one's. I don't care how I, great the checklist is. Absolutely not. You know, b- before before we met you, we had you know we hired consultants. Yeah, 
the only thing they did was, you know, they gave us checklist system systems <laughs> and nobody was following it. I'm like, we spent so much money on this. Like, what else do you guys need? <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. you and I, like, we'll hear like we're in our group, uh, in our coaching program, we have a group chat. And people are like all the time, like, hey, what tax deck should we get? To? What tax deck should we get? And we're like, stay away from the tax deck. Work in your culture. Work in your culture because the tax deck won't matter. They won't use it. You're going to spend won't. thousands of dollars to implement this Joe online, you know, online checklist, yep. all these new things. And it, it, it don't matter. You're going to waste so much money until you get the culture piece right. Yes. Yeah. People spend so much time wasting it's time. And if they actually ridiculous. the culture drives the bus, it really does. It really does. Everything else falls into place. It's just, you know, after we did it, uh, I mean, it's just so crazy. All the systems that we had, nobody followed it. But now yeah. you don't even have to ask. They just, it's just they an, so automatic because they yeah. care. Because they, yeah, yeah. they have a purpose now. Yeah, because they have a culture of accountability and they have a culture where they're dialed in and they're actually, yep. they want to participate. Yeah, right. Yes. That's where we start elevating those cultures. We have different levels of culture. There's toxic, there's training, there's learning, and there's leadership. leadership. And most people have a training culture where, and most restaurants are like this. Someone gets hired, you train them on the front end, turn them loose, that's it. They get like four yeah. or five day shadow program. And then that's right. it. no new education, no development, no hunger, no desire to be better. And then what we work on is trying to get you to this, what we call it's 1% mindset. It's Kaizen, yes. the Japanese call it. It's like constant mm -hmm. never improvement. We want to be 1% better today than we were yesterday. Yes, when you get that yes, attitude yes. in the team and everybody just wants to be a little bit better, you start elevating your culture. And it's a it's a real huge, huge game changer. Yeah. But, but like you always said, better people, better restaurant. And I, you know, I'll be the one to tell everyone it's really, really all about that. It's true. Better people, it's true. better <laughs> restaurant. It really is. Romeo is a testimony way to say, Donald's not lying. It's true. It's it's not, it's it's not, he's not lying. It's not a bunch of BS. <laughs> yeah. It really is. And our reviews shows, they always talk about our service. And it's oh, they because do. they care. And yeah. they, they call out people by name, which is a huge testimony that they love their impact. It really is, because now they, they, they know they have a purpose. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about video. Because, again, one of the reasons I had you speaking at the, at the summit coming up in October mm -hmm. is that you're really, really big on video. So just kind of give us a sneak peek. Now, I have you speaking in a couple of days. Right. Because I thought I, I thought we'd break it down. Like one day will be like basic stuff, and we're gonna give them some homework about taking their phones, going mm -hmm. out in the, on the resort, and like actually shooting some video. And then the second day will be now how do we edit it and put it together to make it a format? So kind of give like you know, like when you're doing video, what's kind of like your thought process when you're looking at stuff? The first thing you think about is how do I want this video to unfold story wise, and then the story doesn't doesn't have to be. Like it can be in 30 seconds. You can tell a quick story in 30 seconds. And then, so it's how does the um, story unfold? And then what is the first thing I want to show? Yeah. So I think that's super, super important. Any great movie, if you go in and if you're watching a movie, it shows you from the first shot that mm -hmm. catches your attention. And that's what yeah. you want to do when shooting even a, a short video for a commercial. And then it's really about how you're um, holding the camera and then your movements. Your movements oh, wow. really, really, really matters. You know, slow movements, one, it makes it a lot easier for editing. Yes. Uh, it makes the video super clear. Mm -hmm. And number two is shoot as much as you can. It can be, if you can do a five hour footage, just do it. From that five hour, you'll only yeah. use 30. 30, 30 seconds, but you'll have a lot to work with. Yeah. So I always, when I shoot, I'm just, even things I know I'm, I don't need, I'll always shoot it. Sometimes I end up using it in the, you know, when, in the editing room when I'm editing. So shoot as much as possible. Uh, write down what the story will be. Always, it'll help. It'll help. And sometimes, even me now, I've used it. AI, chat GBT. I go on chat GBT. I'm like, okay, I want to make a one minute video of marketing and I give them, you know, I give it whatever I want to right. tell. And it gives me a short script on oh, where yeah. to start and how. It's so amazing. Chat GBT is a game changer for doing short videos. Like, oh yeah. my God. Game changer. Game changer. There's if you're stuck, all you do is you put in a little bit of prompt. Now, the prompt's everything. And actually, at the Restaurant Success, I'm, I actually have a class on AI. I'm doing a class on okay. AI. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to do about how to how to put up the right prompts. And one of the prompts we're going to talk about is how to put a video script prompt up, a good video script prompt. 
that will actually generate good stuff. And so I'm going to show you how to do it at the Restaurant Success Summit. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be awesome. So iPhone, right? So let's talk about the tools you need just to shoot a video, <laughs> a good video. You need an iPhone. Is there anything iPhone? you need like a stabilizer? Do you need like a gimbal, anything like that? You can use a stabilizer. I don't use it as long as you're holding your phone like this. Okay. Cool. You don't okay. need, and then it's just slow moving. And I, yeah. So I'm going to bring. I think the iPhone now is built in. It has a stabilizer in it, right? Um, and the new iPhone, especially the cinematic. Uh, oh, the cinematic. Is that what you shoot in cinematic mode? Cinematic. Cinematic okay. mode is the ultimate. So all you need is an iPhone in cinematic mode. Cinematic mode. That's it. iPhone, cinematic mode. I'm cinematic. writing notes here down. This is it. Cinematic mode. Just got to mm -hmm. be slow and steady. Be, be slow and steady. Right. Get lots Always of footage. Lots of footage. Right. Two kinds. Yeah. Of, yeah. Two important shots. So one is a white shot because you want to you want to show what's happening. All right, all right, all right. And one, uh, uh, close shots. Close shots close of shots. like can be a product, can be anything. Yeah. And you know me, I'm big about having people in the shot in the frames. I'm big about so having. I, want, I always say I want to see people. I want to see a face in your place. You know, most definitely, and face. Not only that, try to catch it when they're smiling. Yeah, that really fun. changes the video. Yeah, one yeah. of the one of the thing I love about your videos, like you'll have you'll get videos of like you know family and friends coming down, like celebrating, and like you know it's just like that's what gathering around the table is. People are, like hugging each other. Oh my god, it's really? So you those yep. I think those are the best videos you have. And you like you said, you usually have a wide shot of Roz, and it's usually some logo. So it, you, yeah. you have identity right away. It's like oh, it's Roz, mm -hmm. and then you come in, and then you tighten up the focus, and then you show us some different montages of things, and yep. then you have people, yeah. It's an introduction. You always have to start with the introduction, yeah. logo, and slowly showing the space, and then you go into the product, and then you go into the faces. You know, people yeah. just enjoying their time, and so on and so forth. Cool, cool. And that's all you need. Yeah. So you don't need like any fancy, like you know, absolutely none. I have not used or Nikon camera. Oh my god, this is a while since I've used those. <laughs> 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 and then for editing. Of uh, so I you can use I use Final Cut Pro sometimes I use it on my phone it's called yeah. uh, Splice, okay. But Splice. also there's there's another option. So on Fiverr, when I don't have time, I it's yeah, like yeah. 60, 70 bucks. They edit it for you. Just tell them you know how long you want it to be. Tell them this is how I want the story to unfold, and you pay sixty dollars and they'll edit it for you. And you just you know give them the song you want to use. Mm, and it's so cool. easy. You don't even have to do the editing yourself if you don't have the time. Yeah, and Fiverr is a it's a freelance website. It's F I V E R R two R's. R F I V E R R Fiverr dot com, and you can find. And I also like. Um, I'll have like sometimes I in a way I know I we have clients that don't like their voice, and like sometimes we'll do voiceover, we'll do awareness videos, and you could also go on Fiverr. You have someone edit, but you can also get an artist like a voiceover artist to actually right. do a voiceover for you. So you have a nice overtone for like if you're doing an awareness video, you're doing like a commercial to give people awareness of your brand. That's right. always a great, great thing to do. Like if you go to my to the podcast, the Restaurant Coach podcast, you'll hear a lady in the very front. That's Alice. She's my voiceover artist that I found on Fiverr. She does all my intros for my podcast. I have probably a dozen different ones that she has done for me. And she is awesome. And she does a great job for me. And she's yeah. such a pro. Yeah. It's always nice yeah. to have someone else, especially a professional. And, and if you don't like your voice, you don't like the way you sound on, on video or, or microphone, that's cool. Remember, you can outsource yeah, people. Yeah, people don't like you know? <laughs> A lot of people don't like their voice. I don't – I hate to hear my own voice. So. Yeah, really? You have a good voice. I, I, I hate my voice. <laughs> I hate my I voice. Hate I hate my voice. No. I hate my voice. I don't like my face. <laughs> I think it's a human thing. Nobody likes to hear Nobody their likes voices. The way Nobody look, yeah. loves to see their, themselves, in, yeah, yeah. you know, in on screen. Yeah, you hear yeah. like actors. There's actors who don't want to even see their own movies because they just right. can't even watch. Yep. Them. Yeah, they like I can't watch my own movies. <laughs> yeah. what do you think I don't know. I never seen it. What do you mean you haven't seen your own movie? No, I just can't watch myself on movies. It's like horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just human nature. So yeah, come on down to the summit. We have we have some greater speakers, Kai and Serna. I got Chef Adam Lamb, Bo Bryant, the restaurant giant. I got Chef Craig Shelton. If you've never heard Craig Shelton speak, I mean, this guy, you want to talk about someone who's just like, I mean, Mensa level thinking of restaurants and frameworks that, I mean, he just blows my mind. And I'll, you'll see me, 
Watch, Romeo. You'll see me at the summit. When Craig's talking, I'll be right in there in front. I'll be taking notes like crazy. <laughs> he's, he's like brilliant. And I love like listening to him. Uh, we've got all kinds. I got Ramon Dios coming over. I got Juliet Gus coming in. We got some really, really I got Zach Oates from Ovation. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to meet him. Okay. Yeah, you're going to meet Zach. Yeah. You use Ovation, don't you? Oh, we do. Yeah. We do use yeah. Ovation. Yeah. 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 You do use Ovation, yeah. That's yeah. that's very exciting. I mean, for anyone watching, this is definitely something, a uh, summit that you don't want to miss because mm-hmm. you're going to get a lot, a lot out of this. Uh, for oh, your it's business. 24, 24 sessions in three days. And so, we go from oh 9 a.m. to 6. We got an hour break for lunch. And I don't want anybody to leave, so we're doing lunch. And I have, I'm having a buffet brought in for the lunch in the room. And here's the really cool thing about the summit if you haven't been there before. So at lunch – we have really nice tables and it's like an expert's luncheon where the experts, the speakers will be at different tables and you can go have lunch with them and you can ask them personalized questions about, because a lot of people are embarrassed to ask questions in front of a group of people, but you, know, you right, get a small right. little table of six, eight people and like, you know, Hey, Romeo, man, I really want to, you know, so it's a great opportunity to sit and talk to the speakers and most of them will be there most of the days. I mean, some are because their schedules are only there like one or two days. So take advantage of that. That's that expert lunch. And it's included in your ticket to the restaurant success summit, which is a huge opportunity, especially if you got really something is. about your brand you want to ask specifically about like, Hey, I'm doing this or I'm struggling with this. I'll be there. You can hit me up also all the time. I'm, I'm easy. You know, Romeo knows I'm pretty easy to talk to. Oh yeah. <laughs> all the time. Whether it's a text message, you know, text message, matter. Yeah. what's what time of the day. That's it. Yeah, all my clients know they can reach me 24-7 by text message or if they want to jump on another a call. They usually get some calls each week, but if they need to talk to me just extra, like something's really they, – they have a code word they text me. <laughs> and they text me the really code amazing. word. Yeah, the code word, and then you know, it's an emergency, and I, get, I usually get right on them right away. So let's talk about like stuff like that. So how did stress like, – how do you deal with stress? A uh, few, few, few ways I deal with stress. If I'm at the restaurant and I'm having a really stressful moment is I just take a moment. I leave the restaurant. I take a walk a good yeah. like 10, 15 minutes and I take a deep breath. And that's how I deal with it when I'm at the restaurant. But in general, on a day-to-day basis, you know, going to the gym really helps me and meditating. Oh, yeah, me too. Going to the gym and meditating. Those are the two things that are really, really helping me. And before we started, you know, with you, working uh-huh. with you, I didn't do those things, and uh, my stress level was just. Milka, Milka used to tell me, "Can you please tone it down? Because it's just becoming too much to yeah. the point where it's not worth it to have a restaurant." She told me that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 In fact, I think she told me, uh, "Yeah, before you guys started coaching with me, she thought about putting a pillow over your head at night." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she really did. She was like, "This is too much." <laughs> Start watching Dateline. You know, you're in trouble when your spouse is watching Dateline episodes. You're like, "Uh oh." <laughs> why are you watching dateline a lot lately what are you trying to learn yeah I and don't then know. that's the thing just getting, some, just getting some ideas what do you mean ideas <laughs> oh yeah uh, it's gotten so much better now it's gotten so, so it tastes better. a little funny what's in here nothing don't worry about it just keep drinking it, it tastes kind of bitter i don't know it doesn't taste like right is that anti-freeze <laughs> no 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 <laughs> Uh, yeah no now i'm in this i'm safe now you're safe now now you're safe safe, i'm I'm safe and that's the thing also i love about you know your your coaching is is really not only about restaurants it's about you know ourself as humans you made me a better person you know because i think i remember the first thing that we're doing is you know mindset and Mm -hmm. how to deal with stress that's the first things that we learned you know on the videos and that really i think that is so valuable on so many levels, not only in the restaurant business. If I want to go and open another kind of business, you know, that mindset will help me you know, succeed in anything I do. And I think that's really, really, really powerful. And we're so grateful, you know, for, for all that you do. Yeah. Awesome. So if you came with a warning label, what would your warning label say? <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> uh, warning label would be. Don't take my kindness for a weakness. There you go. Yeah. When we, first met, when we first met, your warning label would have been contents under pressure. Do not take. <laughs> when we first met. Yeah. That would be your first. When I first met you, that was a contents <laughs> under extreme yeah. pressure. Do not take. Yes. Yeah. But now it's like, yeah, yeah don't take my kindness for weakness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, and that's the thing, again, like, I think you've learned too. You and Milka both learned is that you can be a good leader, a nice leader, a kind leader. 
but you're also going to have standards. Standards. Yeah. And expectations. And then as long as the team knows where that line in the sand is and like, you can, and I t- usually tell my team all the time, you can walk up to the line, you can stand on a line, you can lean over the line. <laughs> just don't you, cross you it. Cross that line, we're done. That's it. You know, I yep. it. yeah. As soon as you cross the line, we're done. That's it. Mm-hmm. I think that's so huge because now they understand. You know, they're yeah, exactly. extremely, extremely nice, but they know that we don't play around with our standards. And you always have a, <laughs> a couple of people that test it. And then when you get rid of them, they're like, you serious? Like, yeah, I'm serious. Yep. Here's your check. What do you mean? That's it? Yeah. And then the other one's like, oh, my God. He he, he, he messing around. He, it takes one person. Take one. One person and everybody all of a sudden is like, oh, oh shit. They're not, they're not, they're <laughs> oh, shit. They're they're not playing around. no more. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. it's like the Sun Tzu thing. You got to cut the head off one of them right away. And then all of a sudden the rest is right. like, oh, whoa, okay. Okay, let's do that the right way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that really, really, really helps. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So what's a book, an audio book, or a podcast that you listen to? So there's a lot of great books I love, but great. one. Yeah, look, look at that stack behind you. If you're watching this <laughs> video, you can see the stack of books. Romeo's like me. I mean, an avid reader. You know, I love reading. I read, I barely read five books a month. Yeah, I, me too. I love reading. It makes me yeah. a better person. I love, you know, self-development. Mm-hmm. Uh, books. One that I really recommend to a lot of people is uh, Atomic Habits. The reason oh, being right. is because I've had bad habits before, mm-hmm. and then really that book really helped me change my habits. You know, it's shifting the good, you know, the bad to you know to the good. So I feel like it's it's a book that everybody should read because everybody has bad habits. Everybody has bad habits. Yeah, so it's definitely a book that I uh, recommend. There's another book that I'm reading at the moment is uh unreasonable hospitality oh that's a great one it's a great i love that book it's a great book um so when we come to uh arizona we st- i want to get your books because i've you know read great things about it i really can't wait to read those books you don't have my books yet the- we did- we never got it oh man oh uh, well actually books? i'm coming out to new york pretty soon before the summer oh right? so yeah yep yep yeah i'll bring you know what i'll do i'll bring you a hardcover edition perfect i'll bring you a signed hardcover edition yes i can't wait yeah hardcover set set. yeah okay yeah yeah the collector's edition that you get yeah so trilogy right the trilogy the restaurant your restaurant sucks trilogy yeah it comes in a nice little it's a box set it's a nice little box oh amazing yeah it comes that's gonna be my next Mm -hmm. yeah you'll get the box set i can't wait even my dad has been asking me that he because he wants to read it he hasn't read it yet. He hasn't read it. He's been oh, asking yeah. me, "When it. are you going to get the book? When are you going to get the book?" I'll bring. I'll bring. And I'll, I'll. I'll bring you a hard set. I'll bring you a, a paperback set too, so you can hand them out to people. Treat, you know, Perfect. Keep the box set for you, and then hand out the paperbacks to your friends. Perfect. Yeah. And that's another thing we started doing uh, at Ross is we have book club now with the team. That oh, book club. Cool. We have the gym membership. You know, everybody has yeah. to pull to take a picture. So you know, we're engaging our team, and that's how you know we're able to have a good culture yeah yeah you probably notice your turnovers drop down a lot oh my god there's no turnover and then we get a lot of applications and we just yeah. don't have room don't anymore have yeah, well, yeah that's also know. why you're opening another location pretty soon yes yeah, yeah. we're actually yeah we're looking at a space this week so hopefully we'll work out but yeah we'll keep we'll you know you on our side we'll keep growing the oh, yeah. hundred is well, hundred is the goal hundred is the goal and that's the thing too it's like when you're looking for another space, don't fall in love with location. Find a good location, but don't fall. Don't be so enamored with the location that you'll sign the deal, and it might be a bad deal for you. Bad deal, yes. yeah. Because if the numbers don't work, the numbers don't work. Numbers don't work. You're right. Yeah. And I I've think seen we've been restaurant having... owners like just fall in love with the location. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. And then they're upside down. And you're working for the landlord. You know, want to work. Yep. For them. That's yeah. that's so true. That's another thing. Kyle and Cerna, who's going to be at the Restaurant Success Summit, he's a huge real. He's actually a real estate broker. So oh, he's really really great at restaurant leases. So Kyle's going to talk a lot about like deal or no deal, the art of restaurant leases. He's going to talk about what sort of things that you should look for. What are the things that are, are little things in the wording that you should actually avoid. So, if nothing mm-hmm. else, if you're looking to you know open a second location, third location. 
and you want to make sure you get the best deal possible, talk to Kyle first. Kyle and Cerna is like the man as far as restaurant real estate. I can't wait. That's going to be really interesting because we do get super excited every time we look at a space. <laughs> Everybody's We're like, all right, this this has to be it. I know. You call me every week, man. I'm like, oh, my God, Donald, this is this spot. It's perfect. <laughs> and Milk yeah. is like. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's it's always like that. I'm the one who gets it's like the voice of reason. She's like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and so I'm like, Milka, why don't you tell me about it before, before Romeo signs his life away? Let's talk about this before Romeo signs the paper and you guys are upside down. Yeah, exactly. We, we almost signed a lease this close. And she's like, no. Did you really? Like, we almost did. I was so excited, but I'm glad we did it. And that's why I have her on my side. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. having a good partner that you can bounce ideas off and listen to is huge because it does it does really change the game for you because now you have someone that you can actually have objectivity with someone who can help you look at things because a lot of times like especially chefs we tend to be very very creative very emotional very like let's do it jump in let's yeah. do it let's go oh <laughs> yes that's definitely let's me go! <laughs> yeah I sign up on so many things that drive oh, yeah. me crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're like me. It's like, oh, I signed up for this. I signed up for this. I signed up for this. I'm like, slow down, man. Let's, let's, let's implement. You're like me. I'm, I'm just as bad. Yeah. yeah. I sign up for stuff all the time. Well, I'm a big believer in self-development. I belong in like four of our mastermind groups, like online learning, online coaching. I mean, I got uh, online uh, marketing mastermind groups I belong to. I want to be a better coach. I have some different business coaches that I work with to help me become a better coach. Better, right. So, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's, just, that's so important. And, you know, is, that's the true. only way you can grow as a human. You have to. Yeah. For every level, there's what? another devil, right? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> every level is another devil. Every level, every new level of your life requires a new version of you. Always. And the problem I, is, I, you I get believe there's skills. no way you can reach that person. Every time you think that you reach that person, is going always to, ahead of you. Yeah, oh, always ahead of you. Your future self's always ahead. That's why it's called the future self. You're future always self. trying to catch that person, and that's what I love about this constant, never-ending improvement mindset. This one percent better is that I know I'm never going to reach it. I'm always going to have something more to shoot for, something right. better to be, right. something I can strive for, one little skill I can fine-tune. Because what's the number of thing in restaurants? We always and we talk about this in the coaching program a lot. The biggest three. Time, time management, time management, communication, right, and mindset. That's the biggest mindset, three things, right? and mm -hmm. the biggest three things that we always work on all the time. And like everyone can be better on time management, you know. Everyone can be better on a communication. Everyone can communicate a little bit better, and everyone can work on their mindset a little bit better. I agree. Limiting beliefs agree. are the number one thing that hold restaurants back. You know, you exactly. thinking that there's no good talent out there. These kids today are lazy. They don't want to work. No, that's. There's no, there's no such thing, and we had to learn the hard way. But you know, my guests don't want to pay that much. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. My guests are different. My market is different. You don't understand my market, Donald. Don, Donald, you don't understand. <laughs> well, I understand yeah. people, and I'll tell you right now, all business problems are people problems. And when you understand that as essence, and you understand that getting the right people on your team is the key to fixing the people problems. People problems. And that starts with you fixing your people problems first. Then you're you're on the you're on the way. Yep. I agree. So, so, start, so what's a quote the you live by? Motivation gets you in the game, but habits keeps you there. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Always, always been like that. You know, you get motivated, for, at least for me. I start mm -hmm. something, you know, the gym, everything in life. You're so motivated. One week, two weeks, motivation slowly declines, and then you all of a sudden you don't want to do it anymore. Now I learned it's not. You know, yes, motivation will get me there, but it's habits that's going to keep me going to reach where, you know, I want to reach, my, to reach my goals. My favorite quotes in the world, my fa my number one favorite quote, and I built my entire, the whole restaurant coach brand around this quote. It's a Zig Ziglar quote. You can okay. have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. That's my number that's one quote. My number two quote is Mario Andretti. If everything seems under control, you're just not going fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. And my third quote was actually my, the best advice I ever got in life and in business was actually from my martial arts instructor when I was 17 years old. He had just like, 
he did. We were like, I was, I, I had just gotten my first degree black belt. I was getting ready. I got my first degree black belt at 16. I was 17. I was just getting ready to test for my second degree black belt. And we were sparring and he was going pretty rough on me. And he hit me one time really hard. And my head went into the wall. And I actually still have a scar above my eye oh, right damn. here from going oh, my wow. head in the wall. And I wanted to stop fighting. I said, I, I want to take a break. I want to take a break. And he gave me five words that have carried me through life and helped me really. And the five words are, you'll want to quit. Don't. Oh, wow. That's and that was really like, deep. Yeah. And he was just like, you'll want to quit. Don't. And I was like, all right. And I put my gloves back on and we finished out the round. Yeah. You know, blood poured down my face. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those are the things that really, really, those really are- guide me. <laughs> And then those things, they work. It's a reminder. Yeah, it is. Constant. Keep reminding yourself. Yep. It's constant yep. reminding. You know, it's about reminding yourself. Yeah. Because that's why we do, nudges. Day. we do nudges. We call trigger phrases <laughs> all day. We're just phrases. talking to our team. What's your yep. favorite trigger phrase you use with your team? The uh, favorite trigger phrase we use in our team. Uh... And for those that don't Actually, know, tr- yeah, trigger phrases are like little things that we use to kind of keep the team on track. Like my favorite trigger phrase is what's next. Like, what's next? What's next? What's, what's next? next? Yeah, that's like my favorite trigger phrase. So, what's one? That, what's one that you use with a team a lot? Action trumps intentions. There you go. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we like. We have a whole list of them that we use in our coaching program. Like one team, one fight. You know. Yeah. So one team, one fight. So I made a poster. I mean, it's with the rod. You'll see it when you come. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Is actually there's a, another great quote that I love, and it actually was in, and I broke the essence of that down to one team, one fight. It was actually a quote. It's an African proverb. It says, "If there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm." Wow, that's all. Oh, yeah, and that just goes back to like, if there's huge. no enemy within. That means one team. It's us together, not us against together. each other, not front of house versus back house, not day staff versus night staff, not this location versus that location. It's one team, one fight. And that was also a, a huge thing I learned in pararescue teams. That was one team, one fight. You know, and it, that's a beautiful. I think there's a beautiful thing that you'll see. Like in 9-11 was a huge, I mean, it was a huge catalyst that it brought it was. together. It doesn't matter what our races were, what our religions were. We were Americans. It was one team, one fight, right? And it's the same thing in the special operations team. Like you make fun, like Air Force guys make fun of Navy guys, make fun of Navy guy, you know, uh, you know, Army guys make fun of Marines. Well, everybody makes fun of the Marines, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but I tell you, when the fight's on, though, it's one team, one fight. You know, one, and it really is. It really I don't is. Care. Even next to me, if they're helping me, mm-hmm. I don't care what what branch you're from. And then in a restaurant, there's always that tension between you know oh. culinary team and service team. Always, always. So, they yeah, have just nice staff also too. Yeah, it's so everybody bad. always thinks the other team always other other shift always has it better. Those day guys <laughs> don't do anything, right? Those guys don't do anything. Oh, the servers have it so easy. Oh, those we're kitchen actually, guys have it so easy. Th- you know, we're actually thinking of uh, so at, on a weekly basis. W- let's say if a server will have to do each position at some point, just one day, just That's so awesome. that they see how oh, hard yeah. it is. You know, whatever position, because they always think. The other they person got it so easy. It, you know, they got it so, yeah, they good. Got it yeah. so easy. Yep. So we're going to start doing that. Whoever That's is awesome. in the kitchen, we're going to have them, you know, do just just a day serving and so on and so forth. We're planning on starting that. That's perfect. They have, yeah. Yeah. So they if people want to understand. contact you, they can go to rossplantbase.com. Plantbase.com. Yes, Ross. Right. Or my, my email, it's Romeo at rossplantbase.com. Right, right. You want to reach yep. out to Romeo if you want to talk to Romeo in person and you know, grab a ticket to the restaurant success summit at the restaurant success summit. Mm-hmm. Romeo will be there with hit me and seven other speakers. Yeah, I look forward to October seeing everyone. 24th. Uh, so actually, that's wrong. It's October 24th, 23rd, 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 23rd to 25th. Jesus, I'm getting my own thing wrong. <laughs> October 23rd to 25th. 25th yep. yeah so it's a monday tuesday wednesday it's a beautiful resort called hacienda del sol guest resort it's up in the foothills of tucson beautiful beautiful resort it's been there since like the 50s i think this resort is uh really really cool that's, place. that's very quiet. exciting very very relaxing great ambience great energy it's going to be a great event like i said you can go to a restaurant success summit and you can check out the 
you can check out the agenda. You can see all the speakers profiles and bios, and you can also grab a ticket. There's a few seats left. Uh, get a deal right now because the prices are going up. So you can grab it for a deal, but make sure you grab a ticket restaurant success summit.com and Romeo will see you there. If you want to talk to him on the side and have lunch with him, he'd be more happy to tell you about filming, editing, all that fun stuff. Absolutely. Right. I, I look forward to it. I cannot wait. Robert, I want to say thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for taking the time to share your knowledge and your insight and also your kind of your amazing, amazing background. And I can't wait to get to New York to eat at Ra's Plant. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast, Donna. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Perfect. One question before you leave. What is your favorite book? My favorite book mm -hmm. of all books? The Dao of leadership. Personal Leadership. Personal Leadership, okay. The Dao of Personal Leadership. The Dao of Personal Leadership. Okay, amazing, because I want to read it. Yeah, it's an awesome book. All right, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.